Thank you all. A very informative. Uh, Dr. Russell, I'm trying to figure out exactly how this happens. Uh, in my bathroom, we got a, I got a, a GFCI switch. Something happens, there's a fault, the, it instantly goes off. Doesn't that happen in this case? You talk about a fire up at the, at the top of the tower. Aren't, those, is, aren't there devices that would automatically uh, trip that, that line so that it doesn't continue to feed the, the fire? Or couldn't, couldn't you have a device, if a, if a wire falls toward the ground, that it would be deactivated before it even hits the ground in a matter of milliseconds? Okay, there's about three levels of questions there. Let me take them in the order. The device that you have in your bathroom needs seven milliamps approximately of current from you to earth or to the bathroom sink or to the water in order to trip. One of the problems is that when you have an arcing clamp like this out on a circuit, it's got a very, very low initial current. It is not detected by any device that the utilities currently have, and it, in concept it would be, say, uh, operating at five milliamps like your bathroom thing, which is lower than the things that wouldn't detect it. Mm -hmm. That's our problem, is the things that we use today are looking for higher currents. They're looking for the higher currents that occur in many, many faults. But can't this be engineered? There, it seems to me you've engineered it. We, you've we engineered have a device that informs us, but how about an en engineering a device that will trip the circuit? Uh, tripping the circuit would be the direct consequence of first being able to detect it. We have the technology to detect it. We already know how to trip the circuits off. So uh, integrating this into the utility system, of course, is a plan that has to be done. The utilities are using extremely good equipment to detect the fault once it becomes a higher current fault. Uh, 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 PG&E's equipment today, which I'm very familiar with, would probably detect a fault and trip it in a few hundred milliseconds. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... That's exceptional, right? Problem is, that fire can start in about 16 milliseconds. Grasses in an arc condition, based on research done in Australia, show that ignition occurs in 10 to 20 milliseconds. So we, we don't have equipment today that could remotely do that. Now, the last part of your question was uh, lines that uh, are, are dropped, can we detect them before they hit the ground? There is some work that's been done. It's been experimented with at San Diego Gas and Electric. A good friend of mine ran that project. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to do, but the problem is this, and there's nothing wrong with that if we can do it. Line drops, cut it off before it hits the ground. Great thing to do, but what caused the line to fall in the first place? It may have been this arcing clamp that was detectable 21 days before. I'm talking about a technologies that will keep us from having the line ever fall, not having then to worry about well, whether we can turn it the, off. The technology that you outlined was a very dramatic and important testimony. Let me, let me ask another question. Is the, <laughs> this is sort of a chicken and egg. Are these problems in, in California caused by failures in the pr routine, I know it's not routine, but call it routine failures in the presence of a lot of fuel, or are the failures caused by the weather event, which also incidentally has created the fuel? In other words, is it wind? Is it something that causes it? Or is, are the kind of, could the kind of technology that we're talking about here obviate this problem, or is it a whole different problem caused by wind or uh, climate uh, issues? So you can have a perfectly sound system with everything working well in a current configuration and have a branch blow into the line from 100 yards away in a 100 mile an hour wind and you have a fire. So it is a weather related and not really related to so the- These aren't routine failures, these are weather related. These are, these are weather events, exactly right. Um, we saw, as I said, 100 mile an hour winds in Sonoma and Napa, that is a weather event. Uh, so, but this technology would help because as soon as that branch blew into the line, it would shut the line off. And, and the other thing is here, it is so dry. I moved to California in late April, it didn't rain till Thanksgiving. It was eight months with no rain. And so one spark, I mean, it's just a spark and you know you have conflagration. So anything that would stop the current immediately would be a tremendously helpful technology. Well, there's, a, there's an undertone to this whole discussion, and that is climate change. Okay. Uh, we talk about it a lot around here in sort of abstract terms. I'm going to a meeting on it in a half an hour. But here's a real direct dollars and cents impact. 
that is uh, affecting consumers, individuals, families, lives all, all over the country, uh, and under, addressing that underlying problem is also part of the solution, granted more long term. Absolutely. This is a climate-driven event. It shows up in 147 million dead trees because of drought, warmer temperatures so the beetles don't die, increase in wind speeds, change in wind direction. Uh, this is a climate-driven experience. Thank you. Very important testimony. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. Thank you, Senator King.